What is up, crypto fam? This is the RH Max channel, and I'm Max, um, where we talk about Richard Hart, Richard Hart products, ecosystem, all things interesting going on in crypto in general as well. Um, we know what the best products are, though, don't we? So uh, today we have a special guest, David James. Um, I've been following David for a while now, now and uh, he's Always got some good posts coming out, <clears throat> uh, a good hex skin that I uh, definitely enjoy talking to. And yeah, we uh, let's I think we'll have some good conversations today. We got uh, we want to talk a little bit about um, just uh, what's going on in crypto, the crash all the way down. It's so bad, right? Unless you're staked and then you don't even like why bother even think about it because you can't do anything about it anyways. Right. Uh, we'll say hi to the chat. We got Stevie D. Steve's killing it. He's been on every stream lately, and we super appreciate uh, appreciate him. Yeah, Washington State Hexkin. Uh, we got uh, Gaimon as well. I'm going to keep saying it that way until he corrects me uh, once again. Uh, good evening from Europe. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us, man. Hex on air. Hey, look what Max is bringing. I, I'm trying to bring it. I'm trying to bring it today. I'm feeling good. I just did my workout, and um, not too long ago, this fit uh, kind of kind of try to make the streams around that are a good time for that, either in the morning or the, the uh, late afternoon for me. So uh, glad that worked out for David, for example. Keep trying to trying to make it that way. Belly Hex has joined us. Thank you all so much. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a fun one. I think uh, been pretty heads down, uh, creating content, getting the getting the clips, getting the thumbnails out. Uh, just really want to bring some good content. Uh, I think we got a lot of cool stuff uh, to say and uh, and and to spread the word and. And make sure uh, we're having fun in the process because what an exciting time to be alive. Without further ado, everyone, David James. How are you guys doing? What's going on, Welcome Max? Welcome to the show, David. Uh, man, it's uh, like I said, it's got got my workout in, so I'm feeling pumped. You might know something about feeling pumped, huh? A little bit, a little bit. I was going to think about getting some push-ups in to flex up on air, but uh, hey, wife you know. came home and... Got the boy making noise and rushing around. You know how it is. Um, mm -hmm. But glad to be here, man. Good to see you. Yeah. Well, hey, it's. it's I'm glad we uh, we could we could finally get this done. I know uh, we talked about it for a while, and scheduling's been a wreck for me lately. And I'm like, no, I got this slot. Let's let's uh, let's get it done. I posted the wrong time, and uh, I had to thankfully got corrected <laughs> on that, so I could redo it because uh, meant, meant, definitely meant it to be a two, not two thirty. Um, but on the, on the pump side, if you need to do some pushups on the wall or just like, you know, something during the middle of the stream, you hey, need to get a pump in. I, I've free. done it before. I've, I've been working remotely and people will just piss me off and I'd literally step back. It's a great start, outlet. I just start doing some burpees right here. <laughs> hey, I don't blame you. There's, so have you saw the movie Pain and Gain? No, uh, I have not seen that one yet. It's Mark Wahlberg, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. I think you like that movie. It's uh, it's hilarious. It is unbelievable. True story in Florida, of course, of all places, Richard of favorite place as well. <laughs> um, it's about uh, this just insane, unbelievable true story. They, these guys, they work at a gym and they want to get rich and they do that in a very, there's some like cruel parts in it too. It's kind of, it's kind of hardcore, but man, it's uh that movie will wake you up. You'll be like, I'm, I'm glad I watched that. It's like during the movie, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll have a caption of like, this actually happened. And then after nice. like, before they do it or afterwards, just because it's so unbelievable, like the story of, of Painted Game. So I love a good, uh, I love a good true story, especially you know, and Mark Wahlberg. He makes good movies, oh, even he's if he's not the greatest actor, right? But he's great. I love a good true story. It's got uh, him, it's got um, The Rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson in it. It's got uh, the one guy who plays uh, Captain America's. Uh, Right hand guy, I forget his name. Oh, he plays in such good movies too. Oh, it's got him in it. Hilarious, um, hilarious guy. But it's just funny. They're like these knuckleheads who um, just they have this plan and it goes crazy. And uh, yeah, pain and gain. If uh, if you can, if you want to watch a good comedy, the last ten years, it's it's very underrated. Nobody's. I don't think anyone knows about it. Um, but other than pain and gain, what's uh, I think. You know what's what's your story, man? What do you? How'd you get into crypto? How'd you? Uh, I don't want to say how you came up with your name because I imagine it's probably your real name. It doesn't have to be, but uh, <laughs> it's. I mean, David James. Hmm. We'll ponder on that for a minute. Regardless, like, how how'd you get into crypto? How'd you get into the hex community? What's what's your story? Well, I got a uh, I got David James because 
you know, I'm a real open and transparent guy, but um, I used to do a lot of partying and given the industry that I was in, it wasn't probably uh, a good idea to have everybody knowing, oh, Dave's out partying again. Dave's at the beach. Dave's drunk and dewy or <laughs> mm-hmm. not that I cared because I'm open, transparent, and I, I really don't care, but didn't exactly need my CEO to just go punching in my name and going, oh, there he is. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So I just so I just cut off my last name and it, oh, it kind of stuck. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, but crypto, uh, you know, we I think we all have the fuck if I would have just right. Um, and yeah. I've got I've got a good amount of those. Um, I've never been really wrecked, but I got a good amount of if I only, you know, a lot, a lot would be different. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. So back in 2011, um, one of the guys that I was, you know, my drinking buddies um, was telling me about mining and I'm like, okay. And you're paying, you know, you're building your computer for three grand ish and you're paying 15 extra bucks a month in electricity, but you're making like $4 a month. Like that doesn't sound like you're going to hit ROI anytime soon. Right. Yeah. But the way he was explaining it to me and even being in IT, it didn't make, it didn't dawn on me exactly what it was. My, my takeaway was. We've all seen Office Space, right? Hopefully. My takeaway. Go watch that too. Right. My takeaway was, are, we're just sniffing the internet for these little fractions of a penny that we're stealing, kind of thing. You know the the whole scam of Office Space, right? Yeah. Um. So you know, at that at that point in my life, I was still drinking, still partying, um, getting in trouble spending money I shouldn't have, you know, shouldn't have. Um, so three grand, I'm like, uh, for that? No, I'm not going to do it. It's just, it's not even like I made a full decision to do it. It was just, eh, because hmm. it just, it, it didn't compute to me. Didn't and, click. Yeah, it didn't. And I was like, and then, when was that again? That was 2011. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. You and, heard about it pretty early. Yeah, real early. And um, mm-hmm. my buddy who had told me about it, he wound up uh, he wound up with 30 Bitcoin. And I ran into him like five years later. And I'm like, what'd you do? Or 2018, 2019. So yeah, it was like seven years later, um, right when it hit 19 or something like that. And mm-hmm. he was like, I sold it at 1,000. I was like, oh, Classic. man. But he was living in Thailand at the time, getting he was getting unemployment for uh from Sirius XM, but living in Thailand, hmm. right? So like hey. and he had his and he had his 30 Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think yeah. that happens to I mean so many people. I think I would say 99% of people sold, you know, it went to 30, they sold it because they bought it for two. It went right. to 200 you know they sold it because they bought it at 50. you know it it just keeps happening this escalating ladder just keeps going up down up down and yeah uh, yeah, there's he's he's not alone like there's nothing i know you look back you you look into like oh i wish i would have did that wish you would have did this it's like oh if i would only had that chance you would have did the same thing everyone else probably unless you know you see a product like hex for example you and you like buy into the system and you know you if you sell you're only (laughs) You're going to lose money in the future. More than likely, if you sell now, you're going to give up some gains. So you better be willing to make that trade off. Yeah. Uh, your friend is not alone. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's not the only f- dumb fuck move that I pulled um, in t- late 2017 or 2018. Um, I started mining. I actually did <laughs> what he had told me to do, but I started with ETH. So I built a. Uh, I built a 16 GPU rig and had that running for a while. Oh. Um, and I think I was getting like half a coin a month. Um, but again, I'm still partying. So I, you know, just letting it run, but I'm, 
you know, mining to pay the extra electricity, which was like 300 bucks a month. Um, it was actually a 19 GPU uh, rig, but it would only run 16 stable. Um, okay. kept, I'd have to go down there and fuck with it every two days. Um, so at the same time, I was flipping graphics cards right because <laughs> mm. sometimes it was really hard to get graphics cards unless you had the money and just would run there and buy it or you know i was buying them for my rigs but the price kept going up so by yeah. the time i'd get it i would double my money right there um i made i made a good amount of money on the jedi uh graphics mm. card i don't know if you remember when that one came out no, I, don't Nvidia Nvidia. Stuff I just remember familiar with the Nvidia, you know, the, the different series with the Nvidia stuff. Yeah, they uh they had a Star Wars series. Oh, yeah. okay. That's yeah. one of those. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Um so I'm mining away until the price goes down to like 300 bucks, right? Mm. Which is now I'm getting half a coin. That's 150 a month. My electricity bill is 300 a month. I'm still partying, but I'm losing money and just you know, things are blowing up on, in the external world again. Uh, so I broke it all down. Instead of being a smart person and just turning it off, I broke it all down. Because, you know, a year, a year and a half ago, I could have just flipped the switch. And now the $300 a month is netting me, what, three grand a month. Yeah, depending on how many, you know, what the what the hash rate is, you could get right, probably with the miners and stuff. But yeah, still, still very profitable. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it pays just to throw a blanket over it instead of a yeah. get rid of it. It's like just put it out of your sight instead of get rid of it. Right. Yeah. Should have done that. Um, mm -hmm. So to continue the crypto journey, um, uh, September, October, 2020, um, my initial love, um, even though I was mining ETH, I made a good amount of money while I was mining off of, uh, Litecoin. I really do still kind of like, just have something in my heart for Litecoin. Um, so I, I took a peek at what was going on in the market and I had some old high school friends and we were like, let's throw some money in. Um, you know, an investment pool. And I was like, all right, well, here's what I'm seeing. You know, Litecoin was 48 bucks. I'm like, all right, let's just throw something into there. Um, mm -hmm. That, you know, I think at the height was 400 bucks. You know, so we turned, like uh, yeah, we, we turned, you know, just amongst friends, we turned like five grand into, um, into like 40 or something like that. It's a good ROI. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too yeah. bad. But that got me back in the game for good. Um, okay. So you left, came back. You are mining Bitcoin, left, came back, you know, flipped some, flipped some Litecoin. Were you mining Litecoin too? No, nah, I would never mind Litecoin. Okay. Just, um, just, I try to, so. yeah. Um, when I was mining, I would flip between, um, uh, ETH and Shia coin. Um, I kind of had like 10% mining Shia. Mm. Um, and then the 90% running ETH. Okay. And, and so how did you, how did you get into X? How'd you find Richard? Um, a buddy of mine. So buddy of mine seen my program. He likes what I'm doing, right? He's seen my transformation. Um, over the years, I mean, we used to drink together, you know, and he got, he's on his personal development program and whatnot. Um, so when I got out of jail, he was like, um, yeah, let's meet up. And we discussed a bunch of different things, business and, you know, what can I do for him? I actually built his rig and, um, you know, outfitted his old, his whole new, uh, office space. Mm. And, he started telling me about Hex and uh, the Pulse X sacrifice. And I was like, all right. So, you know, that's when I created my Twitter account, jumped on, started learning, um, and like immediately fell in love because 
you know, you're always taught to do what, you know, the people you look up to do. Right. And I trust my friend and collectively we got a lot of friends that are, you know, millionaires already before even Bitcoin, before not even in the crypto space. I live in a very rich area. Right. Mm -hmm. So they've got a lot of money in Hex. They've got a lot of money in the Pulse X sack. Um, nice. I missed Pulse. So mm. kind of upset about that one, but it'll work out. It'll work out. Um, yeah. You got a chance. You got the pre-bridge coming up. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you wanted to trade a little bit. You could uh, you not, not, price, not pay a little more for it, but yeah, price, price is gonna be, have to be right. And I've been doing some uh, some poking around on testnet, and I'm not quite happy with those numbers yet. If they were, you know, mm. to be the same, um, I'm not sure I'm willing to pay that just yet. Um, but it looks like it's gonna be, you know, I want to stick to my guns and my numbers, my ratio, you know, but. Mm -hmm based off of test net at least initially right might have to pay a little more than i've already set my cap and i'm trying mm. not to negotiate with myself too much about that <laughs> well you're gonna meet a uh, different version of yourself when you're going 100 miles an hour once things start you're gonna be like ah can i hang on to it can i can i do it i honestly like i kind of want to just disappear for a couple of weeks at launch <laughs> like just to you know what i mean it's not a bad move right right um but no so he got me in um i think i got in at the pulse x sacrifice january 9th ish okay that was um, still within the was there a 10 day period yes uh, yeah, it was, it was, yeah it was still ten thousand. hard for me to remember yeah it's still ten thousand to one i got some afterwards because i kept telling my friends and I'm like, look, if y'all just send me, you know, we can get a bigger bag, right? Collectively, you know, you're 500 know bucks, you're 500 bucks, pulling. you're 500 bucks, you're 500 bucks, you're 500 bucks, all means shit individually, right? Let's get more of the bonus. Yeah, yeah, there's, I definitely know there's some people, uh, uh, well, you can see, I mean, I, I don't think, if you look at the top 10, top 20, top 30, top 100, I imagine a good percentage of those are people who are pulling together, who are you know groups right. of friends, groups of investors, things <sighs> like that. Um, which uh, you know has its trade offs. It's not quite trustless, like for example, you know with with Maximus Dow. That's one of the cool things about that project is you don't have to trust anybody. There's no squabbling afterwards of who gets what. It's just like, hey, the contract will tell you in 15 years or yeah. trade max in between. So I think that's cool, but it's definitely. I like the social aspect of, you know, if there's people you can trust, people who you want to have a long-term relationship, yeah. there's something you have, you know, in common to kind of build around like that. You know, assuming you're all rational individuals and you, you know, you want to put to put good in the world, um, there, there can be some good relationships come out of that too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. So you, so did you, uh, so Hex, did you, were you, were you around when the, the uh, launch phase happened for that or no? Okay. No. Okay. When, I, so when did you see, when the first time you heard about Richard and, and Pulse? It was when, it was when I was meeting with uh, my buddy. Um, I mean, it's like uh, 20, that, mid 2021 or early? No, 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 no. I got out of jail Halloween. Um, oh, wow. Okay. So it's been um, so, six, seven, eight months. Yeah. Just over six months. So, and it wasn't even until, uh, it probably wasn't even until December that my buddy reached out and said, Hey, you know, and we tried to meet up for a couple of weeks and then it was new year. And, um, I think we wound up meeting up on like January 5th to, to go over his network. And here we are. Like it's That's awesome. So it's you didn't really... miss Pulse because you were skeptical or, or no, I it. missed it. Cause I didn't know about it. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's uh, I, I, such a, a funny thing about this stuff is that a lot of it is like what, you, like who you know, what projects you know about, like who right. who do you trust to tell you good information, and yeah. you know, if someone like you, someone who's engaged and and you know is is now a uh, you know, part of the, the community and things like that, so many more people who aren't who haven't got in yet, 
and just think about how many are going to want to get in once they see, you know, all the marketing yeah. went on so far about all your NFTs are going to be in Pulse and all your, um, all yeah. your other coins are going to be in Pulse and all this stuff. That's, it's just, it just builds a good future. I think there's, there's so much more potential than, than what we have right now. Yeah. Especially given the amount of people that just don't know, don't want to still scared. I mean, I've got, you know, a good amount of Facebook friends and there's, I get a lot more interaction on that page. Um, cause I've actually met every one of these people. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, They've been following quite a long, or a long, quite a long time. Um, but when I post anything crypto, I get four likes. Mm. And I'm like, and the last three months, I'm like, people, you're going to have to understand. Fiat will go away at some point. It's probably not going to be in our lifetime, but fiat, as we hold it, is going to go away. It has to, Right. We can't continue to print pennies for two pennies. It's an interesting concept. I, I think uh, you know I hold a lot of libertarian principles. So, like fundamentally, you know, I would no say snap that, on snake. <laughs> don't tread on me. Uh, um, it's I think, and I mean, Richard talked about this too. I know he's not a libertarian specifically, but I think he has, he shares a lot of the same values of yeah, money. Uh, you know, we're talking America centric here. Uh, yeah. At least money is, uh, you know, a check against the government, a uh, check against censorship, uh, things like that, physical paper money. Um, and then you can talk about guns in the same way. You could say, you know, again, check, you know, that's the American Revolution, all these things, like another check against the government. Um, so all these like very controversial things that technology may or may not affect. It's, uh, it's, uh, there's definitely trade-offs. I definitely can see money being in a different form, being digital in the future. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure how that affects, you know, your individual sovereignty and liberty and things like that, but um, things are going to be digitized. We did, we're digitizing everything now. Why not money? So I could see that point. I just hope it's in a way that doesn't take away a lot of the freedoms that money implicitly gives us. And again, gives us that check against uh, censorship. Right. Um, Unfortunately, like, and this is, years and decades and centuries down the road unfortunately i do see a kind of communist world um, where we're all the same everything you know we're all under 100 percent supervision of the powers that be and don't get me wrong i fucking hate it like i'm i don't classify myself as a libertarian anymore but i hold those very centrist um you know socio status very left right you're you you do what you want to do i don't care right like kind of money wise and government stay the fuck out of my shit i'm very right um mm. but i like to think of myself as fairly dialectical to where you give me your argument i'll listen to it and if you can change my mind i'm open to that and it doesn't matter which side that happens on um but in the very, very long future, I, I still see like the way I think of crypto is Minority Report. Mm. You remember the movie, movie Minority Report? Oh, yeah. Remember Not how please. everything was controlled by your iris? Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's... Now, now think of that, whatever's on the other end of those readers being on the blockchain. Your money, mm. your, your, your economic status, what you own, what you, where you're allowed to go, you know, what doors you're allowed to pass through kind of thing. It could be that way. You, I mean, do you think the whole world is going to convert, like, you know, the whole world is going to converge on that or it's going to be, you know, Canada is that way. Not Canada probably won't exist in the current, in its current form in a few hundred years. <laughs> I mean, America may not exist exactly the way it is now. Right. And, and neither China nor any other country, but like, would there be like, you know, 10 countries and like five of them, have these various shades of we control everything and there's five that are like the free state sort of. Well, I think, I think collectively the world, you know, and this is that this could be thousands of years, you know, um, away. If, if the world even lasts that long, you know, Putin doesn't blow it up or something. Right. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But I can see, you know, little pockets of revolution. Um, but 
for the most part, you know, one world government, new world order. It make un- unfortunately, it makes a lot of sense. I agree. It, right. Um, Cloud Atlas. While we're on movies, Cloud Atlas. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I saw it one time, and I think it was like, if I remember correctly, it was like three and a half hours long, and I was long. Yeah, I watch and, it. I, see, I can't even watch a two-hour movie fully. I got to do like one hour. All right, the next night I'll watch the other half. I just can't do it. No, I'm good with watching long movies. I was just, I watched it in bed, nursing a awful hangover at like 4 p.m. That is not no. the best time to watch Cloud Atlas. No, no it, it was <laughs> it's a very deep movie and, and you got to pay attention and a lot of crazy stuff happens. Uh, but oh. yeah, if you're, if you're dealing with a hangover, uh, try the movie, The Hangover instead of uh, Cloud yeah. Atlas. That's going to oh, be more it was, enjoyable. It was bad. Like I've been laying in bed with my girlfriend for like three hours and it seemed like, God, it seemed mm-hmm. like years just like, make it go away (laughs) yeah yeah uh but in that movie it uh it taught you know it goes through different time periods uh right like the same characters it's tom hanks uh yep yep and uh i can't remember i can't remember all these actresses names either um halle berry no is it halle berry i don't remember maybe halle berry um somebody in the chat correct me uh if, if you've seen it but uh yeah it goes through all these time periods they play different characters and it's just show it way, way in the future. It is this kind of like these people. It's kind of like Westworld in a way. Like these people are robots, uh, and they, and they, you know, all this, all this stuff happens, and it's much more like industrial technology type stuff. And uh, it does seem fairly authoritarian. So, yeah. uh, whatever movie. happened? Whatever happened to Westworld? Uh, are we just waiting on trailer. a season three? Ish uh, four. Season four a trailer just came out. I think. I think I watched okay. it today. Nice. Uh, I, I, it appears to be that they are going back to West World. Okay, um, that's from what I gather. I hope so because the new the new age one. It's if it was like a completely different show, I'd be like, oh, cool. But since you've been you you went to you know, season one and two, once you go through West World and Japan World and all this stuff, and it's just you show all this amazing, just like heart wrenching, like just raw human nature, just stuff. And then you go to the modern world. It's like, ah, I kind of like the other one a lot better. Right. So that was my take. I, I like if it was a separate show. Season three was a separate show. It'd be fine. Uh, but if it's, I don't know, it's not quite the West world uh, anymore. Right. It's season three. Yeah. That, that, that season one was pure fire. Oh, man. <laughs> I remember being at the end of the season thinking, I don't know if I want to watch season two. I don't know if I can take it. Like, I, like this is like pulling at my heart. Like, I don't like, I feel unethical almost watching this because <laughs> i feel like it's pulling at me like no this shouldn't happen it's so bad but it's so interesting <laughs> too and like i love the exploration but it's tough westworld is not that's not a show for um not a show for the weak at heart i'll say that no no not at all there was another one um that only lasted like one season um the guy that played in the second robocop can't pull the name it was pretty sci-fi i don't know that one Oh man, it's gonna bother me. Chat, help us out if you can. <laughs> um, well, while you're thinking about that, though, let's. Uh, so, what do you think? What do you think is gonna happen with the crash? Like, what do you do? You think? Uh, I don't know. For me, I'll preface it with: this is like the seventh time crypto has crashed in the last thirteen years. I was reading a tweet this morning. I was like, everyone, like, especially if you're staked in hex, why do you care? And I understand like the, the financial, like, like in real businesses, like the, in the stocks and, and, and stock market and stuff like that, that's going to like hurt companies from taking on more debt and hiring and do cutbacks. I understand all that. That has like a real world impact, but for crypto. And again, I know there's crypto businesses and maybe they le- get levered in, in different ways to, to take on uh, new money and investors and stuff too. I get that part. I think it's much smaller than the traditional markets, but you've seen this movie. It happens. It happens pretty regularly. It cycles up and down. So right. if you're panic selling right now, it, do you like? I would. Do you believe it's never going to go back up? Because history shows it goes back up over and over and over. So I think. I think it's for me. I just every time I see it, I don't even it doesn't even affect me that much because I know you know I'm staked and I know that it's going to go back up. And I've seen this you know before too. But I would just say just take look at the bigger picture. Take a step back and look at. 
this is a feature. This is not a bug. This is not like a meltdown as the news wants to put it. It is a cycle. It goes up and it goes down. In history, it keeps going back up. So why wouldn't it keep doing that? Why, why is this time different in, you know, in that respect? It's funny. Uh, I got a little pin from... <laughs> You guys are going to laugh at this. This is solar winds. <laughs> oh, solar winds. Yeah. yeah. A, solar a security winds. incident. It, it's not a bug. It's a feature. <laughs> wow. Nice. Solar winds. Uh, they had a, uh, I think the story is that a state sponsored um, supply chain attack that affected uh, the federal government. Mm -hmm. and, People uh, don't understand just how elaborate this is. And, and I don't think that they understand that it's still lurking no matter what anybody tells you. No matter what, all your servers yeah. are patched, all your holes are fixed. It's still lurking because you didn't just go and change your entire network infrastructure and an IP scheme. You just didn't. Everybody knows that. And it's you big, didn't just go. You didn't just go. So how do you know you got all the bugs? Yeah, and you didn't just go out and you know swap all your hardware either. You know, it's just if you got the schematics for three hundred and ten different. I think that's what it was. Um, companies government organizations um you can do a lot of fucking damage still i certainly a woke a lot of companies up you know, and woke up the uh the supply chain attack is a real thing and it happens and yeah. hopefully there's some lesson learned there for it to not keep happening the same way but uh, yeah just was... imagine imagine the scale and the people that had to be bought to do that that's a big problem especially in big tech it's uh i mean what microsoft had uh, was, it, did, was it some kind of spy? I don't want to say Russia because I don't know for sure, but I thought they had some, uh, you know, because that companies hire a lot of foreigners. A lot of times they have work visas, things like that. So they are, that is a thing. Like, it's not like a weird thing to say that has happened. They are compromised people working at companies in other countries Absolutely. who, who this, this stuff happens. So, well, I mean, how else do you, how else do you release code <laughs> that supposedly should have massive amounts of checks and balances um you know how many people signed off on that before it got packaged mm -hmm. and delivered yeah well, there's a lot there's a of eyeballs a lot of eyeballs it could be a process uh improvement uh maybe they weren't so many eyeballs as should have been or they, those people could have been bought too that's uh that's one they're trying to tell me solar winds doesn't have a software development cycle program <laughs> they got to right yeah well it, there's different levers to turn that i would say like okay yeah we're doing this compliance says we gotta like have one one or two people sign off on each thing but it's not i, I guarantee now their processes are much more strict i'll say that they oh, right? got somebody yeah. from the government in there like hey you better be doing the the, the best job you possibly can or right. you're gonna pull your contracts yeah uh i got a question from Bobby Hexelrod, appreciate you coming on. Bobby, you've been uh, killing it for us too. Luna is an anomaly. Makes me think of the word tamale. Uh, it's spelled a little incorrectly, but I definitely can read what you mean. Uh, tamale, let me think about lunch now. Uh, the market was right here in May. BTC went on to hit all time highs. Wash, rinse, repeat. Gives two shits about BTC. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, first of all, I would say, why do you care about Bitcoin? Uh, Richard says it all the time. Why do you care about the price of Bitcoin? Why do you care? Yeah, sure, it's an indicator a lot of times of the broader market, but uh, for how long? And if you're not in projects that are correlated with the broader market, such as possibly anything in the Richard Art ecosystem, for example, uh, why do you care? Why do you care? Like what? If you want to get the same thing other people have, you should care about the things they care about. Yeah. If you want what the broader market has, this panic sound like, oh my God. Crypto's dead again. It's been dead like the seventh, eighth time. Or you want to be in the hex community. You want to be here with the strong hands. I mean, sure, there are some whales selling. It's been up and down. Maybe some games going on there. I don't know. Like what happened during the full sex sacrifice. That was kind of crazy. Um, but hey, I think uh, if you're staked, you're locked up. You're an ecosystem that's uh, much, much less correlated than, uh, for example, Luna going to zero. Mm. Rest in peace, Luna, and anyone who invested in that and uh, the influencers who uh, kept trying to sell you it along the way. That was, uh, I've seen some crazy tweets lately about it. So, yeah, uh, definitely. Better things some... to care about. 
Yeah. So to answer your question, the people panic selling right now probably have to, right? Um, they were well, over. So are you they saying they have to like they? Need well, I think they were. I think they were over. Contracts. I think they were overextended, and they just didn't budget correctly. Like, I'm very much at peace with anything. A, because I'm stuck. I'm staked, right? Um, I'd say ninety percent, ninety-five percent of my portfolios. So, so they just can't. Now. They just can't wait a few months or a year or whatever it takes for it to go back up. No, what you're saying. right, right. You know, because yeah, they know that it's not going to sixty k, right, in the next two weeks. Not in the next two weeks. No, right. It's going to get to sixty k. I'm sure. Right. Not financial in advice, years. but uh, that cannot see that happening. <laughs> right. Um, so. They're just taking their losses, keeping what they can, you know, outside of the tariff folks. God. Um, but I can see it. Um, I can see another dip. Um, I think I've said, uh, I think I've tweeted 23 is about where I see it. I don't, you know, and I, I've been wrong before, but I don't see it going below 2018 never again. The all time high there at 17, 18, 19, wherever that actual figure was um, with the end of the candle. I think it might have been 19.4, but <clears throat> I just, especially if, if Sailor is going to get effed in the butt c- come 21, billionaires don't let billionaires become millionaires, right? You see the amount of money on um, um, uh, Whale Alert pouring back in now a lot of it might be going to another exchange but i see a lot of money coming back in um to save his ass and to save uh do Kwan's ass and to save I, i'm hoping this was a, a a gesture to the people that really got wrecked to give them some of their money back right it was up a thousand percent this morning um but I think that's just for show. Um, but I, I I do see it still uh, slow. I don't see 29 right now, whatever we're at. Uh, yeah, I can see it going down to 23 over the next three or four months. Um, you know, I got my conspiracy theory about Gox. Um, mm. Not a conspiracy theory, but... Um, you think those coins are coming on the market? I think they're I think they're trickling them in right now. Hmm. Um, I could be wrong. Somebody probably knows that address and can, you know, see if it's, you know, moved or not. Uh, maybe they just figure out a different way to do it, to send it to the guys or whatnot, but it's still got to get on the chain. And it would make sense to me if I were the federal government. And I was a collective of individuals that probably hold Bitcoin, right? The lawmakers themselves, the the guys in the Pentagon, whoever, right? The General Services Office, um, or General is it GSA, GSA, General Services Administration. Mm-hmm. Those guys, everybody has some Bitcoin. I'm not everybody, but. There's enough people that have it that when they're making these decisions to regulate and do this and do that. I don't know if you saw, but Germany, by the way, said if you hold Bitcoin for a year, it's tax free. Um, oh, did not know that. They, yeah, they announced Congrats that German yesterday. That. Yeah, right. Um, <clears throat> so I don't see them, you know, th- thinking it's a good idea to just release three to six billion dollars back into the market right drive everything down because the second those guys get that back it's gone right yeah yeah i, I mean i think them. since since the market has been i mean all markets have been selling off lately um when the money does come back in what like what would say say you don't know much about crypto but you see you know it go up and down you see the gains are much bigger than the stock you see People on TV talking about it all the time. It's got a much better reputation and most, you know, it's been around longer than it ever has been before. What are you putting your money in? Are you going to put it back in stocks? Are you going to put it back in tech? Are you, are you going to put it in uh, crypto one way or another? I, I see a lot of money coming in flooding. 
once this once the cycle is over, I see a ton of money coming back into crypto that won't go back into traditional finance. I agree. I agree. I don't know. I wouldn't put a time limit on that because everybody's, you know, if you if USDC went to, you know, a penny, everybody would be screwed too, right? So that's what people compared Terra to. Um, and the stable coin, the trust is gone. It's going to take a while to build that back up, especially for people that don't know shit about shit other than what crypto is. And crypto to them is just Bitcoin. And, oh, didn't everybody get fucked on the stable coin? So they're going to be, whoa. Yeah. They don't they don't know what to do with the feds raising rates. You know, gas is out of control in California, pretty much everywhere. But you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Everything is just highly inflated. I mean, shit, so, smartest thing might be to do right now with some people's money, you know, and it's it's different for everybody, right? Like my finances ain't the same as your finances, ain't the same as noobs finances, um, you know, so everybody, you know, do your own research, manage your own wallet, right? Um, I just, <laughs> I go bury it in the backyard, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Go bury some cash in the backyard, maybe, uh, you know, head to the pawn shop, get some physical gold, <laughs> you know, go a little treasure. Yeah. There'll definitely be uh, some people diversifying a bit, but. Uh, well, I definitely have to be diversified and I don't, I didn't, I'm not as diversified in crypto anymore as I used to be because I thought, why not? Um, but now more that I've fallen in love with the Richard Hart products and, and just the community and him as a whole, like I can see, I, I read people really well. Um, I tweeted a while back. I'm like, with the amount of money that I've got invested in these projects, if in a year, two years, Richard disappeared, all of our money is gone. I would, I would Bravo that man. Right. Because to pull one over on me and what, my gut sees and all of the technical analysis and the millions of hexagons eyes that are on everything it's <laughs> like i said then it was a really expensive experience and i'm gonna enjoy the ride yeah i would say a lot of people could say they probably wouldn't have even lose any more money they say i would say a lot of people got their principles out already they uh, have learned a lot from Richard, even outside of crypto. Um, they, uh, I mean, all the projects that are built on it. I mean, yeah. all this time and effort of people right. who see, they see that this is this is going to be a thing. Like it's not yeah. going away. It's yeah. not. It's not a scam. It's not a Ponzi. It's none of those things. It is a system to be built yeah. upon and to thrive. And is all kinds of future proof. You know, at least for yeah. fifteen years. I think. I mean, it could have been. It could have been thirty years, but. Uh, I don't know. That kind of rhymes with a mortgage. So maybe uh, we want to stay away from traditional finance on that. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, like, like you said, I, I feel like I, I, after watching hundreds of hours of Richard, I'm either mesmerized and part of a cult yeah. or um, I've seen one of the few projects that makes sense. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to, happy yeah. to have found them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad my buddy was, you know, it's, it's weird how like we weren't, the greatest of friends before, you know, we, we had our, our party and days and it was amazing that, cause I didn't even know he had been following along. Like I'd see a like here and there over the last couple of years, um, since I started my personal development process. Um, and you know, it was really cool of him to reach out once I got out and kind of be like, yo, I seen your shit, uh, you know, I like to get down with people like that. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm what can serendipity you know, it's beautiful yeah yeah it really is yeah. so it's just i'm having a lot of fun um this I mean, community is fun it's very fun it it pushes my mental limits it's it's crazy uh when you hit a certain level of enlightenment as you're going through your personal development process and over the years and there's a lot of people that I can't talk to. Um, 
at least without sending like a condescending asshole. <laughs> I'm like, because yeah. the things that make sense to me in one second, like you, most of us very highly intelligent people in this community, nobody else sees. It's like, and, you know, I'm not judging or I'm not here to shit on anybody, but it's like our frequency is here. They're here. We could tell, we could explain these things to that we're blue in the face and they're just, if they're not on the right frequency to catch the, the information, then it's, well, you know, so, so the- finding this community and Twitter, um, cause I actually was on Twitter for a long time, never really got it, did anything with it, deleted it a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And now I really enjoy it. Cause it was such a toxic place before. It was just nothing but arguing. Yeah. And I'm like, liberally use the mute button, <laughs> but, um, no, I no, think that's one of the problems awesome. is, that's, uh, I think it's one of the problems that for people is they have their project, you know, whatever it is, dog coins, whatever it is. Uh, you know, there's thousands of crypto projects out there. And a lot of them feel the same way we do, or at least similar, about their coin. So imagine how hard it would be if, uh, you know, you meet somebody and they're trying to tell you about, uh, I don't know, Bonzo coin, like just some coin. That's probably a real coin if you go look it up. I just literally, <laughs> top of my head, Bonzo coin. And they're like, no, man, you, this is the future of finance. This is this is great. The founder I've been following for a long time. You know, that you got we got this great roadmap, all this stuff. And you're like, man, I don't want Bonzo coin. I want hex. I want my I want my coin. Like this is my coin. So I think that it's. I know there's a mental model around this. It's almost like uh, whatever you've already got. I forget the name of it. Whatever you already got, you are biased towards that, and right. giving it up is very hard to do. Yeah. So Richard said this on stream before too, is that I think it's one of the reasons why he tries to appeal to broader audiences, ones that aren't even in crypto yet, because yeah. he knows that the people who already have their coin, they're probably going to stay in that coin. Unless it goes to zero. Luna folks come on over. Uh, we got, we got, we can help you out with that. Well, but if it, you could if not, just copy the entire network. So everybody comes over. That'd be a really good idea. Wouldn't it? Yeah, let's really do it. Smart. Let's do it. I think we can make a little bit of money off. Of yeah. That. Bonzo coin or <laughs> fork and pulse chain. <laughs> now, David is, of course, referring to what pulse chain is doing. Uh, another genius marketing technique uh, that Richard has used it to get people on board. So you want your coin? You like your Bonzo coin? Come over on pulse chain. If it's Ethereum token, you'll get Bonzo coins and pulse chain. <laughs> um, confirmation bias. There we go. That's one of them. I think there's some overlap with a few different ones. But yes, Bobby, thank you for that. Uh, it's a great one. But not everyone talks bad about hex um i'm going to start with uh i think there's some people some of the big influencers i I watched a video that today i think from hex clips from the heart i always always want to say hexa club because that's another good youtube account that does these clips but um it does like these mashups of different people talking about different stuff but um this one was from clips from the heart and uh there was some big influencer and they're saying some very nice things um like ivan on tech he was they had a clip from him talking about the interview Rand from Crypto Banter, he was saying some good stuff. BitBoy was even like, didn't he say like he had a bunch Ooh. of something, a bunch of hex or a bunch of he sack for pulse, hmm. something like that. Help me out, Chad, if you if you know some more about nice. that for sure. Um, but I um, did see, yeah. I saw Alex on crypto um, finally starting to come around a little bit because I think we kind of jumped on him a little bit because he was, and I. I'm gonna Once you get my... mobbed by hexagons, you either uh, block them all or you yeah. rethink your position. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's, I, I checked out his YouTube. Uh, he's got 187,000 subs. So I, I'll keep my opinion about what I think and what I see to myself. Um, I just don't understand like where some of these influencers get the hate like you gotta have some right if you're a crypto influencer and you don't have hex in your bag a little bit because you know i like to spend money testing things right i'm gonna buy a little bit of something just because i'm gonna build shit just spending money just because i want to learn how to do it right you know proof mm-hmm. of concept kind of thing um <clears throat> So if you're if you're gonna call yourself a crypto influencer and not have a bag of hex, you know, fucking 
coin market cap and their goddamn gatekeeping. Um, Never ending. Right. Um, then you, it tells me you haven't done the research to know what you're doing. You're stuck in your two, three coins, which is fine if you want to be, but don't, don't talk about anything else. Like I'm a big fan of not talking about shit. I don't know about <laughs> and yeah. not listening to people that don't have results. You know, why, why would I, how am I going to convince somebody to do hex over Bonzo coin? Because hex has proven track record, right? Yeah. What is, well, what maybe is that's where a lot of it comes from too, is when hex first came out, it was new. It didn't have that right. proven track record yet. Right. And a lot of the influencers saw it who are still around today. And they said, Hey, this looks like a money grab. No way it'll work. And then they say it. And then their followers they think that and they it. create this and now they don't want to take it back. Right. So I think that's wrong. part of it too. Yeah. yeah. Admitting you're wrong. You know, the pride aspect, you know, what, what, what's more in their benefit? Is it what, how is it beneficial for them to say they're wrong? What does it get them? Maybe a little bit of love from our community, but like their followers, would be like, oh, this guy was wrong. You know, should, should I listen to him again? Should I listen to her again? You know, it does, it's, it's, they're basically incentivized to always be right. Or, or at least not a bit it when they're wrong. So unfortunately, <laughs> uh, being a personality that that comes with it. Yeah, it's so ass backwards. Like, uh, I, I pride myself on being transparent and open and honest, and especially with social media, because, you know, everybody is somebody on Facebook and Twitter, right? Every time you see them, they're, you know, on a beach or got a drink in their hand or buying some clothes or, you know, hanging out, life. hanging out with my girls or, you know, yeah. whatever. Right. And they show you all the good shit. Right. They Richard show working you out in fashion clothes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you Richard, describe where... Richard this whole time? No, no. Uh, but nobody, nobody shows the bad shit and I'll show the bad shit. Like you can look through any of my, my social media accounts, um, far back enough and you'll see some real bad shit. And it's just me being real, telling my story, because if I hold that in, um, I feel like I'm lying to myself. I'm lying to other people. And then if I hold that in, nobody gets to know. Right. And I've made a lot of mistakes. So if I don't share those mistakes and what works and whatnot, then maybe somebody else makes those same mistakes. And, you know, we're all not going to be alive long enough to make all the mistakes ourselves. We have to, you know, pull things from anybody we can. And the things that you don't say, nobody's going to get anything from. And it's kind of selfish. Yeah. I mean, I th you reminded me of a good quote that was, um, uh, I think it was from was it from Nietzsche? I think Frederick Nietzsche. Nietzsche. I don't want to misattribute him, but uh, it was uh, the easiest Polish person to fool is yourself. How's mm -hmm. it go? Uh, shoot, I, I already messed it up. Anyways, it, the the idea is that you um, you're very easy to fool if you start start telling yourself stuff and start believing these things yourself, and they're not true. You can fool yourself into thinking they are true over time. That's the yeah. I totally butchered the quote. I will look that up later and put in description to to patronize him. <laughs> um, but Nietzsche's got a great a lot of good quotes like that too. Get yeah, that yeah, because you know that was, that's part of my you know farce of a life for a long time is I always had this vision of who I was and I wanted to be, but none of my actions aligned with that. Right, so mm -hmm. whenever anything would question myself or somebody else would question that then i would have to defend it based off some some morals that i had in my head but wasn't practicing so i you know it inevitably inevitably it leads to lying and you you, you tell the tell the same things over and over and over and you're like wait no i, I was never at that party what are you talking about? No, that's crazy, bitch. When you've only just told the story 200 times in a lie. Now the lie is the truth. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how that works. You can keep saying things until you believe they're true. Um, it's, it's good to surround yourself by people who call you on your shit. 
Yeah. I think that's super useful. Like don't, don't let surround yourself by people who want the best for you and will tell you when you're making a mistake. Now, well, I'm sure there's lots of people that would say, Hey, don't invest in this. this I, I Googled hex and it looks like a scam. Don't invest. There's certain things you need to dive a little deeper on. Right. Uh, thankfully we've cleared a lot of that stuff up on Google. I think the first page or two is fantastic. Now there's one article that's negative. It's very, very popular, but it is fairly objective. I give the guy props. Like he did a good job writing it and he pulls out a lot of stuff that is uh, concerning if you don't take a deeper look at it uh, or just risks that you're just making a trade off with, you know? Um, yeah. So I, I think, uh, yeah, surround yourself by good people and they'll, uh, they'll tr- keep you, uh, keep you on a good path a lot of times. Yeah. It's funny. You, you mentioned that, uh, <laughs> a buddy of mine that I onboarded, um, left his wallet open for it and his wife found it this morning <laughs> and she's like you did what i looked it up it's a scam blah, 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 blah. so much hex going you put you put that much money blah. i'm like oh here we go <laughs> wow yeah, yeah well uh yeah. just tell her to hang on two or three weeks uh yeah <laughs> and yep. see it we'll, we'll see what happens yeah. Um, but speaking of, speaking of, so we found, found some influencers who, who've been talking who I didn't know, but it said some good things about Hex, but funny enough, Peter McCormick's back in the news. Uh, he, uh, I, he tweeted the other day, uh, Hex will be the, as you say, Hex will be the next Luna. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Yeah. And we're just ripping them man, apart. Man. How, how have you, he's, I can't even. I don't know. I don't see how people even still think about it. Does, does he just want the clicks? Does he just want the to create the engagement to, to get it's people to or is he still on this is he on this holy mission to to like tell people about scam as a hex or, or hex is a scam or something this has it. gotta be one of i mean he's got almost five hundred thousand followers but at the same point like this has gotta be like a you know any news is good news kind of thing um I kind of took it that way. I took it as, hey, he's talking about Hex again. This is interesting. Like, it's free, right. free for us in a way. It, it, for us. But I think for him, it's not staying relevant, but it's hmm. con- controversy sells. Yeah. But he, so do you, I'm, I'm trying to, I made a joke on uh, with Hexologist the other day on, on his thread of like, I think Peter's a secret 555 staker and that he's actually going to run and frolic and laugh with us running through the fields, you know, in the future. And it's all going to be good. Um, I was joking. I don't think that's actually the case. So if it is just, you know, trying to drum up publicity or whatever, is it like, what is his mission? Is it his mission? Clearly it's, it's against Hex. So right. what does he, what does he get out of that? Other than yeah. likes and tweets. And now he's got more people looking into Hex. I don't get it. What's the advantage? Well, maybe he doesn't hold any at all. And, just to st- he knows it'll stir up controversy. Um, he just wants more shit storms for Hex. So are you saying? Yeah, yeah. That was the deal. Yeah, I can see but, that. You know, because if he's going to say something like that, then he knows that his five hundred thousand got people are going to probably not get into it. Which, if you did own Hex, that's exactly the opposite of what you want, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, it's it's such an interesting thing. I mean, he. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Peter, Peter's, uh, I've, I've seen him on the, the crypto, uh, what's that, uh, pomp show, uh, uh, what's the best business show. I've seen him on that the other day and, uh, seen him at the Bitcoin conference the other day. So he's still doing stuff. So I, so why he's just he still a Bitcoin maxi. I, I don't know. Like, why is it like, if you truly believe something like, like Richard says too, like if you truly believe it's a scam, why do you say the name? Why do you give it the publicity? Right. Why even say it? Unless it's a very, you know, strategic move in a situation. Like what tweeting it? That don't make any sense. So I'll take yeah. it as a as a sign of uh hey. we're catching a break that Peter still thinks about us, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's four hundred I just looked it up um because I had seen him and I followed him a couple of um tweets, um, but I don't really know much um about him other than you know his bitcoin and he likes you know he's kind of a basic dude um shit i forgot where i was going with that because i was looking at twitter for a second 
I forgot. <laughs> Did you watch the original uh, interview with uh, him and Richard? Mm-mm. Oh gosh, that's that's a. Uh, it's so cringy, but it's it's entertaining at the same time. He just basically the whole time it's just like Richard will say something. He's like scam. I'm not gonna buy it because it's a scam. I'm not gonna you know scam. Nope, because you're you're lying, people. Blah blah blah. And just like the whole time, there's zero open mind. It's as if I think he he took the position of, I will not let this man compromise me because again he believes he's he's on the other side. He's he's on he's fighting for the people. He's on this righteous journey to not support scams. So he totally turned off and would not interact in any level that meant thinking about what Richard was saying. And hey, Richard, Richard, the marketing master, he you know persuasion influence that's what he does he, he's great at it right. um but if you're going to engage and have a debate and have a conversation you can't just you can't stay on the other side and say scam 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 you can't you've got to engage you have to use your brain and that, that was so disappointing to me i thought hey here's this famous guy talking to richard why isn't he bringing his best brain game instead of just shutting down the conversation well i knew he'd lose yeah well, <laughs> I knew he was I'm not sure get he wrecked. knew he'd lose, but but we knew he'd lose. Yeah. I wonder if it's a it's got to be a jealousy factor or something. Maybe they know each other from back in the day, and the, you so know. you don't think there's substance. You think he's he's literally just uh, you no. Know, it is some kind of personal deal. <sighs> I think it's is. one of those two things. One is it, it's either he truly believes that hex is bad for people. Or he has some other just personal thing against Richard. It's like one of those two things, it seems like. Well, he could be a, a sailor kind where it's just, I, and I, you know, I haven't followed the guy long enough to know what kind of bags he holds other than Bitcoin. Maybe he's just a Bitcoin maxi and literally only Bitcoin. So any other coin, you know, outside of probably the big four, Ah, they're all, they're all crap. They're all crap. I'm not positive because I don't know enough about the guy. Okay, so maybe his his vision on which coin. So being a Bitcoin maximalist, for example, and his vision on which coins should be the winners makes him make would make him talk negatively about any project. Just so happened, Richard right. is so you know uh, flamboyant. I guess is the word about this, and so out there, and so like in your face about it. That it encourages him to say negative things. Yeah. Maybe that's number three. Yeah. I, yeah, I just, I want to see, you know, five, 10, 15 years. I wonder if Peter's ever going to be like, he's going to, uh, he's going to be in the documentary. It's going to be, you know, some like PBS documentary on Richard Hart. And it's going to have, you know, maybe him on there being like, you know, it was early days. Uh, Hex just launched. I formed my opinion a little too quickly. You know, I just <laughs> bought my bag at, at $5 a coin. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe not quite that com comical, but like I could see him being as some one of the people from the early days of Hex they interview to describe like how he, you know, he he missed the boat on that one because yeah. uh, that's that's a more likely future than Hex going to zero. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's the beautiful thing about crypto in general I, that I've been trying to tell my my friends that have yet to. You know, they're still all all no coiners for the most part. Um, is just get in right just get in dabble learn it as you go you know you're gonna make some mistakes right yeah but you know you try to limit your mistakes for what you can afford yeah, I mean, like you said, everyone's got their their own personal finance story. Everyone's got their uh, you know, billionaires look at the world differently, look at their finances different than millionaires, different than uh, than we may, different than people who are just working paycheck to paycheck. So, um, hard to say on that. Yeah, um, I do want to get into the uh, the book section. So. Yeah, a segment called Two Good Books, uh, where we just talk about a couple of the books, uh, a couple or more. One could be one, two, three, could be 10 if you want to. Um, but just books that uh that made an impact on your life. Uh, let me go first. Yeah, um, my first book that made an impact on my life is uh, Outwitting the Devil with Napoleon Hill or for, oh, by guy. Napoleon Hill. Um, it's funny, most people uh, I've talked to 
they know the uh, the other Napoleon Hill book, um, Think and Grow Rich, which I actually haven't read that one yet. Um, oh, yeah. That's a good one. Um, but Outwitting the Devil was something I read um, while I was in rehab back in early 2021. And I had already begun my personal development process and, and transformation and whatnot. Um, but it wasn't like until I read that, that I really understood what we were trying to do with um, personal development and my daily processes that I had started to master. Um, mm -hmm. Because he put it in a really good way, you know, the universe at its most basic isn't is the atom, right? At least pretty sure. <laughs> basic unit measure. Yeah. And what is it? It's 50% positive, 50% negative. But we as humans have the ability to to sway that. Right? You know, you mm -hmm. got it's the classic angel on one shoulder, devil on another shoulder. Which one are you gonna listen to? Mm -hmm. Um, and that was such a metaphor of, you know through movies and cartoons and everything throughout pretty much everybody's life. I think if you've got television, <laughs> um, but I never understood it. Right. Hmm. And it wasn't until I read that book that it clicked and I'm like, this is what I've been doing the whole time. You know, and I've been perceiving things wrong because it, you know, 49% scarcity. Uh, are you breaking up me? Uh, hmm. I think you were breaking up for a sec. Yeah, you're awfully happy on my end. Okay, How, how's it now? Still bad. Let me see. Yeah, I think it's on your end for a sec. You're, uh, Working on that for a sec. We'll come back. But I uh, just want to say hi to the chat. Uh, Bobby Axelrod. Uh, Hexelrod. <laughs> See, I said Axelrod right there. Appreciate it. Hex on air. You guys have been uh, DJ Chromatic. Keep the, keep the questions, comments coming. Appreciate it. While we uh, uh, handle this technical glitch real quick. I'm not sure if uh, you're just a robot over there, um, like even with the audio. So I didn't hear anything other than chop, chop, chop. Yeah, yeah, that's what we see on your end as well. Damn. Somebody oh. start downloading a bunch of stuff at your house. I uh, could be my, my minor. Um, throws a lot of uh, data here and there. Okay, we'll come back to it. Uh, while you're uh, while you're working on that, if you need to reset something, or I'll I'll just talk about my couple books. So we got uh, we're going Jordan Peterson today. We're doing uh, Twelve Rules for Life. Let's see if you can see it. Focus, focus, focus. Hopefully so. No, not focusing too much. Twelve Rules for Life. Um, this is a great book. Um, you know, and the the other one, uh, the second version of it, Beyond. Shoot, I can't show anything on this camera. Beyond Order. Jordan Peterson, Beyond Order. Uh, anyways, Jordan Peterson, uh, famous psychiatrist, uh, psychologist, <clears throat> just has a lot of really good stuff in reading. Um, you know, you don't have to agree with everything he says, but uh, 12 Rules for Life, for example, st stand up straight with your shoulders back, treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping, befriend people who want the best for you, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. Don't let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. Uh, that's, that's, I think it's especially useful, especially if you have kids, um, pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient, tell the truth, or at least don't lie. That's a very important one to remember too. assume the person you were listening to might know something you don't. Uh, that one really stands out to me of, of just having open mind and being able to, um, talk to people and listen to them and not just think about the next thing you're going to say, you know, actually listen to what they have to say just in case it may be meaningful for your life. Uh, be precise in your speech. Uh, don't bother children while they're skateboarding. It's just, you know, let kids play type of thing. And pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. 
uh, that's one I like a lot too, is just be open, you know, don't be, don't uh, just be sheltered and not going out there. Oh, I don't want to touch, I don't want to wash my hands, all this stuff. No, interact with nature, you know, uh, be, uh, hang out, hang out with, uh, the, with your animal friends, enjoy nature. There's more a lot to life than uh, being on a computer all day and tweeting and, and checking your phone. So while uh, David is uh, going through the technical side, uh, trying to fix his stuff, K, uh, King J has a question. Tether was to crash like UST with, uh, with that impact hex since it got pegged to Tether. I'm not sure how hex is pegged to Tether. Um, so I would say the framing is a little off on that question. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not quite sure on that. Tether was to crash like UST. Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Text mainly trades with uh, USDC, it trades with Ethereum, things like that. I don't think uh, there's uh, much on the tether pair, I would imagine, but hard to say. Um, yeah, so, and USDC, that's actually one good thing about Coin, Coinbase um, is that uh, they did come up with USDC uh, and it's run by a billion dollar company. So uh, there is a lot of people and have a lot of incentives to keep that going uh, well and to uh, make sure that uh, it is uh, safe and secure and uh, funded well and that the same thing doesn't happen. I mean, there's a lot of stable points. The, the US, uh, the Luna thing and the, the UST uh, deal, it is kind of an outlier in a way. I mean, love, love stable coins, hate stable coins, whatever, whatever you think. Um, they, uh, there hasn't been like a one good to zero, uh, like the UST duck deal. So it's a, it's not like this common thing that happens and there's this huge risk, but, uh, let's see oh, David was back, but I lost him again. Um, but if USDC crash, could that impact hex? Uh, I mean, if USDC crashes, I think more than hex is going to be impacted. I think, uh, it's going to be a shit show out there if that happens. So it's kind of like asking, you know, the imaginary, I know it's a, it's a legit question, but kind of in the realm of imaginary horribles, um, not likely. I wouldn't worry about USDC crashing anytime soon, uh, especially after the UST uh, stuff happened. Um, there's probably gonna be a lot more concern. There's gonna be a lot more eyeballs on making sure this stuff doesn't happen again because uh, stable coins are, fundamental uh for the industry you need to be able to go in and out and uh know the dollars with the dollar and or whatever the currency is and um yeah they're not they're not going away they're going to continue to serve a purpose and uh, coinbase has uh, definitely put a lot of resources behind it exactly gen 69 that is true um well i'm not sure what happened to david unfortunately he was really going in on the um on the uh, Napoleon Hill deal. I was enjoying that. Um, so uh, let's see what else is going on. Chat, you guys got anything? Uh, any other questions or stuff you want to talk about? While we uh, take a second here and hope David comes back or else, uh, else we may just go ahead and end it. Appreciate you all showing up. We got some new people, new subs uh, here too. And uh, yeah, King J, Gen 69, Bobby Exelrod. Appreciate you all coming and uh, having some fun with us. So um, yeah, I'll close that with my gratitude remarks. I'll say that, um, you know, every day should be a little bit like Thanksgiving. Uh, eat good, great conversation, say what you're thankful for. I'm grateful uh, for the Hex community. I'm grateful that, uh, you all come here. Um, I'm getting new subscribers here. Appreciate it, King J. Uh, you are supporting the content. You're sharing the links. Uh, definitely love to see people in the chat and uh, interact with you when we're live. Um, I'm going to keep having guests on. Uh, see, the next guest I have is Matt uh, G. I can't remember how to say his last name. Let's see, this Tuesday, I believe at 11 or so. Yes, please sub if you're not already. Appreciate it. I will have him on to talk about the new hex book. So there's a, uh, a new hex book coming out. 
a lot of you may not know, um, but uh, he's promoting uh, his book right now. I think it's supposed to come out in the next month or two, somewhere like that. And uh, it's uh, it's coming out, and I'm going to have him on the show uh, pretty soon. Hey, see if uh, let's see if David's back. Hey, you back? Yeah, I went down to my uh, I went down to the gym. I don't know. I probably got a runaway process or something going on on my computer uh, upstairs. I, I, it happens. I left. That's what it felt like. Back. I did a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm like, I'm not dealing with it. So I just ran downstairs real quick. Where maybe, hopefully, we get a little uh, Zoom sessions or something going on. You know, some live where you get your pump on some workouts. You know, why not? Yeah, man. That's, where all the magic happens now. Um, I do a lot. I do a lot to hear, um, but it's just, I still go to my own gym um, probably once or twice a week just because I want to do a little bit more weight or I want to do a different exercise. Um, you know, I'm not trying to roll the weight off of myself at five o'clock in the morning and wake up the kids. Yeah. Now it looks kids. like you're renting out your, uh, your gym there. You so say you're going to a gym and you're renting that one out. It's a nice place. Now, this is my personal gym. I do have some clients that come in. Um, I got two that come to the gym. Um, I got some at the gym. I do some online coaching. Um, but my gym, literally, I can jog there in like four minutes. So it's like... When I want to add some weight or do some different exercises, um, it's ten bucks a month with no contract. Can't be. <laughs> no, for sure. Well, uh, we kind of skipped around a bit while you're out, and uh, unfortunately, we we caught the first part of the Napoleon Hill. Uh, oh, great book. Um, yeah. Maybe we'll. Uh, I'm definitely. I I think I think I've read part of it i tried to listen to the audio version but a lot of people complain about the audio version because the, the lady narrating it is just she, does, she stops a lot and does a lot of commentary and it kind of messes up the flow um oh. i wish that was not the case uh because uh, my wife has read it and she said it's been great yeah i don't know about the audio book i've only had two audio books and my first one was uh the 12 rules of life with jordan peterson which is Fucking phenomenal. And, but I, literally, I just talked about it while you were out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because he is a public speaker and because he is reading his own words, and you can hear him get emotional through him narrating it. And it's just awesome. It's just awesome, especially to have my first audiobook, um, him. It was just, which leads me to my next one, which we, I think, Anybody who's in, you know, motivation and personal development and uh, has probably heard of David Goggins. And oh, I was just about to say, it. Can't Hurt Me is the best yeah. narrated book I, I think I've ever seen. It's fantastic. No, 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 not for me. Not for me. Um, oh, okay. Uh, coming from literally straight from Jordan Peterson. Okay. Right? Oh, yeah. That's, then, that's a different perspective. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I, I like. I like the, you know, let's cut to the to the podcast, that kind of stuff. But when you go from Jordan Peterson to whoever that ghostwriter is narrating a book, I wanted, I, I couldn't do it. I stopped. I, I literally stopped it, went and bought the yeah. hard book. And I was like, I'm just, you know what I mean? So that That's was my experience. <laughs> you yeah. heard it here, folks. Uh, make, make 12, unfortunately, make 12 rules of life narrated by jordan peterson the last book you ever read otherwise all the other books won't taste as good yeah yeah pretty much um but yeah. it, having having a, a speaker narrate his own book and then having a, a ghost writer read for goggins i would have just rather heard goggins well they do stop so so since you probably didn't get through it then uh, they do stop and they talk about it That's yeah, yeah, I, like yeah so much I heard about that it. i did hear yeah. that and i like that and i like that they clip back to the podcast but the book yeah. like i don't want to hear about david getting his ass whooped by anybody other than david right yeah that's true that's it's true just, that's a good I, point uh, i agree with you on jordan peterson though he he read i there's something about somebody reading their own book that you really got to respect to because that's yeah. that's not easy it's not easy to have a steady voice 
and to have a voice that people want to hear uh, for hours and hours, as long as books yeah. are. Yeah. And that was, he got me choked up when he was choking up in the middle of reading his own stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's impactful books. Uh, I went through the 12 rules. I went through those. I mean, just fantastic. Uh, and then the 12 more rules um, is the second book uh, that, that I touched on, which is just more, more great stuff, more him just, uh, just killing it. Um, yeah. So he's got yeah, he's a, lot of, a lot of really, a lot of good stuff. He comes out of him. Yeah. He's definitely in my, uh, he's definitely in the rotation of make you damn bad. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's definitely enough, in the rotation I don't of. My wife makes I don't bed. either. I don't make the bed at all. It's it's kind of a aspirational thing, maybe of like, hey, you know, in, like, don't take it take it uh, figuratively instead of literally, because right. I feel like I'm pretty productive. I never make my bed just because I don't. I just don't like to do it. And well, the, <laughs> I got someone else to who who, per, yeah. who is okay doing it, so it's not. Yeah, good. yeah. I mean, it's definitely more of a figurative speech thing, but. I actually did used to make my bed. It would be one of the things I would do. Whenever I happened to crawl out of bed, I would leave my bed nice so that when I crawled back in. Now, my it's a good strategy. Pro my, per my, my process is so good in other ways where I don't need to make my bed. So now it's a time waste and an energy leak for me to go and make my bed. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's one of those things that uh, if you can optimize, you know, your day around things that are giving you the most bang for buck, honestly, making your bed, what's it doing? You're going to get back and mess up the same way. Get it. Exactly. I would say put it in a way that's going to make you comfortable to get in and out of it. And if that's making it, that's fine. If you yeah. just want to leave yourself that little hole to crawl in, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Do that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. don't don't like go out of your way to do these things that don't add value to your life. So I think that's right. the message. Yeah. So uh, purpose over pleasure. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I've got, there's no purpose for me to make the bed, you know, unless maybe we were having people over and, you know, you, you yeah. tell them, go set your, you know, jackets on the, on the bed in the master bedroom, that kind of thing. Should I put them under the covers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I could see that. But yeah, otherwise like, no, it's a waste of time. Yeah. This might be a little bit of, you know, a very small amount of time, but I, yeah, that's two minutes I need to catch up on sleep. <laughs> exactly. Let's get one more question before we close. Uh, uh, how do you make yourself better? Like personal development, you know, you touched on that on and off the whole conversation, but like, you know, give us just a few things, reading, writing, working out. Are you a coder? Are you creating stuff? Like what, what do you like to do to make yourself better? Um, all of the above. Um, it starts with, an early wake up time. Um, it then goes to reading or writing, um, journaling, just listening to music, uh, quotes. Um, I don't know if you guys seen lately, but I'm, go I'm reading, um, non negotiable and I'm just highlighting some mm -hmm. shit that makes me feel good. Yeah, puts me into a, a certain kind of place, right. I call that the positive mental attitude, right. Get my attitude. Cause you know, Waking up early sucks and nobody wants to do it, but it's necessary. Um, so I, if you got a reason mostly, to wake up, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. But I, 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 now that I'm in it, it's like, if I don't, now I feel like I fucked off my day. Now my mindset's all messed up. And, you know, there's too much juggling that, that would have to be done. I, don't yeah. know, I feel like I'm in it. Let's do that. Um, uh, okay. But I basically I get myself prepared, right? I get my whether it's meditation, I read the Bible or you know the big book, um, just something to get me out of fuck. I don't want to be awake right now. Ah, it's nice and comfy in that cozy bed. Uh, I'm sore. Maybe I could just take the day off or you know to get me out of that negative mindset. Um, that bed ain't making any money. Okay. Right, the bed ain't making me any money. Um, <clears throat> but then it's uh i usually have a glass of water a big glass of water with some uh some sort of you know pre-workout um energy coffee whatever and a banana um and then it's in then it's into my walk um get a little more into you know 
my spiritual and, and thinking and, and just, you know, now that it's not butt ass cold, I can use my fingers a little bit more while walking for a couple of miles. Right. So, yeah, you know, get my scrolling and what out of the way. Um, and then it's, you know, get that heart rate pumping as fast as it can go for as long as you can go. Um, That's a lot of people don't get to about cardio. You don't need to run five, 10 miles. You just, the most important thing is get your heart rate up, get, get vigorous run. exercise. Like, or yeah, you don't have to run, but just like you could run, you know, I don't, I, I go out running every day, but I don't run very far, but every right. time I make sure I get out of breath, I get my yeah. heart rate up. I get that stress on my system that keeps me anti-fragile. keeps me in that good shape. Right. That's the most yeah. important thing you can do. Yeah, I absolutely refuse to run. Like, if, if I'm running, you better run too because the dog's coming or the cops. <laughs> I think there'd be a lot few people running if they weren't for sports. Sports gives you that, hey, go up to the ball, you know, or go, go tackle that person or whatever. Right. I think a lot of people run. Yeah. only. Go, otherwise, yeah, it's pretty boring, I got to say. Yeah, so, you know, so then I get, I, you know, I get my workout in and then it's my diet um, right after that is my, my breakfast. And, you know, the... If if we all didn't consider it a joke when you were a kid, you know, when we were kids, like you are what you eat, you know, you know, you must be shit, you're eating shit or what, you know, whatever those kid jokes and stuff are, where you really are, which you, you are what you eat. Um, it takes you that long to realize it's true. Yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah, yeah, it took me like 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I stick to it and that keeps me going and then it's all business whether you know whether I, right now it's not any business i don't have a job but you know but if i'm awake i'm thinking about ways to better our life somebody else's life checking in on people um, got a lot of things going on you know um i've worked more in the last you know 15 months that of not having a job than I probably did in the 10 years that I had the job before. <laughs> hey, we're all working in Hexco. Yeah, man. Yeah. We, all, we all got a role to play. Uh, you definitely seem like a man on a mission, dude. very driven, very uh, routine oriented. Definitely someone who's, uh, you said you seem set up for success, man. You're going to, I think, I think hopefully we're all going to kill it with the, uh, with Hex yeah. with Pulse launch coming up. I think, uh, yeah. So exciting. <laughs> I think it's going to be great. Uh, one more question. Gay, have you read Plato? Uh, have you read Plato, David? I have Plato's not. works. Mm -hmm. I'm I mean, trying to all, think. We've all heard of him, and I yeah. you know, could, could probably go, oh, that was his quote. Probably heard that one before, but I've never actually read Plato. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've just read quotes. I don't think I've actually went into the books. I started doing some of the classical books or at least listening to them, but they're just, they're hard. Hard to get through it. I prefer to get the summaries and to get the highlights. You get someone who spends 30 minutes to an hour who has studied it that can give me the, I don't yeah. want to say Cliff Notes version, but like give me the big ideas so I can consume right. those. Uh, reading classical stuff has never been my my forte uh, for better. Yeah, it's like it's like the uh, it's like the Bible. Like I, the first time I tried to read that, I, you know, I wanted to to read the real one, right, the old version, and then I'm like. I, I can't make sense of anything. It's like there's so many different people involved in the English and the wording back then. Our, 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 you're flip flopping everything, and there's so many characters, so many things going on. I'm like, I, I just can't understand this. <laughs> I had to go to the real version, you know, the, the New Testament. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, medieval stuff is is tough, even with the the translation uh, from Old English. And I, I do, however, read a lot of the. Uh, you know, uh, like I mentioned, Nietzsche, a lot of the philosophers from the last century or two. Um, I do get a, a, to read a lot of those books or at least the uh, uh, some of the writings and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, as far as the uh, Plato and, and a lot of the uh, ancient philosophers, it's a uh, it's hard to read the original. I'll say that. So uh, let's close it out with the, I, I kind of did gratitude before I introduced it. Every day should be like Thanksgiving, eat good food, yeah. have great conversations, say what you're thankful for. David, is there someone or something that you want to express gratitude to? Like somebody did something really nice for you, or you feel proud to be, you know, to, to be friends with this person, or you 
uh, there's some company that you use their product. And you're like, oh my god, I, c- I cannot live without this thing. Like, like what, do you, what do you want to express gratitude uh, to? No, I, w- I just want to express gratitude to a couple of uh, oh, they'll, they'll remain anonymous. Um, they've reached out to me at least three or four people um, because of my Twitter posts, and they, they've reached out to me and explained to me their struggles with their substance of choice, and uh, I'm grateful for them because that shows that, you know, that, that's proof of work right there, right? You know, yeah. pr- pr- it gives me a little bit of, you know, external validation that what I'm doing is good and to keep it up. So I thank you guys out there. Um, you know, I'm going to be here if you ever need me. That's it. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Definitely, definitely a good thing to be, uh, share wisdom with people, just help people have compassion, sympathy, empathy, uh, really listen to people. Not just, I feel like when we talk to people, a lot of times we're just waiting to get the next word in, but if you really listen to someone, you can just tell, I appreciate it. So I, when I'm talking to someone, I'm almost, I'm almost a little bit too much demanding. Like I demand, like if you, if I see your eyes wandering off, I'm just going to stop talking because I'm just wasting my breath. Like I want to connect with you. I want to share what I'm talking about and, and to you to grok it and us talk about it together. And I think that's, something a lot of people they just they're thinking about what next thing they're going to say they think about what they're going to eat for dinner you know, yeah just have a have a conversation with someone that's, that's that's so important in life yeah you know dialogue is works both ways it's not a monologue yes otherwise it's a monologue there <laughs> so, there you go cool man so so happy to get you on the show uh hey, man, I, I knew it was gonna be a great conversation guy. it's yeah. uh yeah it, it definitely turned out to be Chat, you all were awesome too. You gave some good questions, good comments. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, you want to talk to David on Twitter? It's uh, at David James One, and uh, you know I'm the RH Maximus. So uh, let's get to it. Let's get it next time. See you, everyone. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. All right, Max. Yeah. Take it easy, man. Bye bye.